was a photographer who captured much of the Arab Spring, particularly in Libya and Syria. Television does fine when there's easier access, like in Tahrir Square, but when it's difficult and it's dangerous, it's still photographers who know how to operate and who take the risks to cover the important story. The Arab Spring reinforced the primacy of photojournalism for the biggest in, in international stories. I think the problem is, is um, things are changing rapidly and uh, we don't know exactly how they're changing. Mm -hmm. And we don't know how that'll affect us as photojournalists. Um, I don't know how many news outlets will be standing or whether they'll be flourishing on the web. Uh, you know, whether, whether there's employment opportunities, people will send us to cover wars or not. You know, whether we'll be able to fund the stories that we want to. Um, so there's an amorphous nature, but there's a plus side to that as well as a negative side. The plus side is because it's not fully formed, we get to potentially help form it. Okay. And come up with structures okay. that can do so. Things like uh, emphasis, which helps fund uh, photographic projects by crowdsourcing. Okay. Um, we can build institutions and organizations okay. uh, and companies. Okay. So, you know, that's the upside. The downside is, uh, to a degree, we're winging it. There are a lot fewer people covering news because of the economy of, uh, of the news business of magazines and newspapers. Um, uh, there just aren't the assignments there. People are not getting paid to go out there and do it. And the New York Times is among the very few people who are spending money to cover the important news. We spend millions of dollars every year to cover Afghanistan and cover Iraq. After the first year, most people outside of the wire services, uh, BBC, um, uh, you know, they just, it was prohibitive. We had 200 people on our payroll at one point. You did do a book on race, and what kind of lessons have you got on how race has been framed in the past and how, how uh, things, because I mean, your talk was very passionate. Obviously, you know, the, the, the idea of how race has been framed in the past must have really influenced how you, you, you see and you, you see the dangers of framing in terms of what you get as, as an editor, what's put out there, how you, how, you, how you put things up and how you frame the view. Of, uh, how, how can you speak a little yeah, bit? Yeah, particularly bit. in the last six months since my colleague David Gonzalez uh, came on to Lens, we're particularly interested in issues of representation, okay. how people are represented and by whom. The journalist's job is to figure out the truth uh, as best as they can in an existential world and convey it accurately. Assad and Gaddafi may be evil, what they did, did ever, and are doing to their people. But who are the rebels in these countries? We've been making it look like it, this was a struggle you know, of just good and evil. We need to dig deeper than the easy dramatic photographs. Often the photographs like I've been showing, the photographs like you see in world press sometimes, we need to show more rounded views of people as full human beings and not just symbols. We need to try to use a subtler approach to images and visual language. It's very hard in conflict, but we need to try to give a fuller picture. And also we need to train and encourage people to tell their own stories. Thank you.